Eric the Computer Guy. Hey guys, Eric the Computer Guy here. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Windows Vista era machine, an HP Pavilion A6512P. This computer is equipped with a Pentium Dual Core, 4 gigabytes of RAM. It, I want to say a Pentium Dual Core E6200. Something like that. It's a very low-end CPU in that generation LGA775 socket. It's got Windows Vista Home Premium, 500 gig hard drive. And you'll be surprised when we boot it up that it's actually running the original software. I'm going to actually... Oh, it would help if I had that and hit F11. I had the BIOS set up a bit differently than normal. When you hit F11... It will send you into the uh, system recovery. So cool. Unfortunately, this thing's power supply is shot, so I had to put in a 430 watt smart take into it. But it got me thinking is it possible to use this thing with Windows Vista for a week? I'm going to be getting it set up to do that this coming week and then ride out the end of July running Windows Vista for daily use. Now Vista is no longer supported as you can imagine. It came out in 2007 and it's support in 2017. So it's one of those things. We're just going to do a fresh install of the HP Recovery Media because why not? Yes, I would like to launch believe that's what we want. No, I would not. Let's see other options. Perform a system recovery to original factory condition. Um, recover without backing up files. There's not a lot on here. There's only, I think, a hard drive backup of the system image, which I have on another computer anyways. I am going to be replacing the hard drive for my one week use of this. I'm going to be putting in a more reliable, modern, uh, one terabyte drive with the factory image because I want to see how it was running this back in the day. I'm going to remove all the bloatware uh, from that particular drive, but this one I'm keeping original. I'm going to eventually port this image onto a 500 gig SSD. Now I do know an SSD in this computer would be overkill in all sense of the way, but I do want to migrate from a spinning hard disk on these older systems when I can to an SSD. And this would be a perfect example. I'm going to be putting in a Core 2 Quad eventually and eight gigs of RAM. I'm also going to be looking for a graphics card from the era to slot into this. When I do the testing, I am going to be putting in a wireless card, removing the old dial-up card. I am also going to be putting in a video card and bumping the RAM up from two other computers to this one, giving it 8 gigs. I'm going to steal the Optiplex 760's 4 gig kit, and I'm going to steal my XPS 1 24-inch machines 4 gigabytes of DDR2, giving this thing 8 gigs in total. This will get its own 8 gig kit when I can afford it, just like with the SSD. I'm also going to be putting in an HD DVD drive into this, just for uh, the comedy of the fact that it's from that era. Surprise, it actually was never equipped with one. It has LightScribe, so if I get a LightScribe drive working in this, I should be able to use that software that HP has on here, which would be a joy. It'd be very great to run that software on this machine. I'm going to let this thing do its 17 minutes of recovery, and I'll be back as soon as we're at the uh, Windows setup experience. Alrighty, the recovery is complete. Now we're going to um, finish the recovery by clicking finish. It's going to probably restart the computer completely. I may actually change that bio setting if that's the case. Well, F10. We're going to fix the BIOS setting. I just had it like that because it looks cool. Looks like the old BIOS is from back in the day. Even this does. And yeah, that confirms my suspicion. This computer is from about 2008. 
Is that 5908 or... Yeah, it's probably like or 9508. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it's a Pentium dual CPU E2200. 2.2 gigahertz. It does have RAM in every slot. Huh, that's odd. One stick's not detected. We'll have to fix that. This computer's weird like that recently. I think it's just dusty. Yeah, the boot. Oh, we're gonna disable that. Exit saving changes. Yes. We're gonna actually completely turn the computer off. Turn it back on. Go back into the BIOS. Because this computer's freaky like that. I don't think it's a motherboard problem. I think it's more or less just the fact this thing's so dusty. Inside, I haven't gotten around to really doing much with it inside. Huh. We may have to do a quick diagnostics. So let me disconnect this tower and pop open the side. We're going to actually do something different. We're going to pull the plug first. We're going to hold this for 30 seconds. That should be 30 seconds. Plug that in. We're going to boot it up. We're going to mash F10. I hate when these computer projects end up like this. I really do. It's so frustrating. It's like you get it going and again like what's going on with this thing had four gigabytes when it booted that stick die that stick really up and die on me gotta be a fun part now this is one of those um, inverted motherboards, so it's a ATX flipped upside down like a BTX. You can see the RAM resides down here, so I guess is one, two, three, or that's three, or that's three. So I'm going to pull all the sticks out. They're all the same, so... There's that. One gig... PC2s. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to individually reseat these. We can move this connector out of the way. Pop all these tabs up. They go in this way, I know that much. Do they really go the other way? These little suckers go in that way, don't they? No, they don't. Ah, oh, man, that's just become a pain in the butt. Let's see about it now. Yeah, these are going this way. I hope I can actually align them properly. That one's in. You gonna go in now? Come on. Channel two. They all look fine, so maybe it's just needing to be receded. I'm hoping that's all it is. Because this is a motherboard problem. This is the second machine on me from this generation of hardware that has died on me. The first being or problematic to me, rather. The first being the Optiplex 760. That thing's been a nightmare. I don't like that computer. 
I, I really don't. It's been a nightmare for me to use. It's bad to say it about these things, but a lot of them are a pain in the... You, you, you know you know what. Okay, secure, 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 secure. Now, I'm going to flip it up right. We're going to skip the side panel for now. We all know it's bad practice. Put the side panel back on before you diagnose the problem completely. We got video. It's got to go up this way. Cables. Oh, Y'all going this way. It's all right. My big old head's in the way. Probably was. Alrighty. Let's hit F10. Keep on hit F2. That's like the key I know for BIOS. In almost every computer. HP is different that way. Yay! <laughs> it worked. It worked. However, the system date and time is way off. It needs a new CMOS battery. Uh, today is... 7... Rather, no. 07... 07. Today is what? Tuesday, the. Tuesday, the 13th. Twenty twenty one. The time I don't really care about. I just wanted to be on the correct date. And. Save changes and exit. It's not going to keep that, but I want the install to at least reflect the correct date. Because when I do the other goodies, I'm going to have to unplug this to put the other hard drive in. But I just want to have the correct date right now. Personal preference, even though it's kind of dumb. In many ways, even though the CMOS battery's dead, I have to buy a pack of those. They're not too expensive. I'll definitely have to clean out the computer. As you can see, it's dusty. It really is. If I put a, I'm thinking about putting a Core 2 Duo in it for the time being, upgrading it from this Pentium E2200. Even though the Core 2 Duo is an E6400, it's about the same generation, and this can technically support the E8400 out of the OptiFlex 760. And go up to the fastest and most powerful Core 2 quads as well. But seeing the VRM setup in this thing, I'm kind of weary about putting in that big of a chip. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to stick more or less with something a bit more stable, to say the least. And... I definitely got to restore this machine to near factory quality or upgrade it. I've always thought about keeping these things factory spec uh, for the most of their life, but I'm kind of thinking, at least for now, I can easily revert this machine back. Just like the Dimension 3000, which is an XP machine with the entire factory image, I could easily, if need be in the future, revert them back by dropping in the things that it would need. Now the only difference with this computer would be in the future would be those PCI slots. Two of them or two of them that are in there are punch outs and one of them is a slide out. I'd have to replace them all with matching slide outs in the future, but that's fine by me. You know, this is a very basic machine from its heyday. It even still has a sticker on the right side of the tower. It's got the HP pocket media expansion bay option which i kind of want to get a couple of those pocket media bays from my understanding they're just two like two and a half inch hard drives i kind of want to get some of them it put ssds in them as stupid as that sounds but it would be kind of cool to have that solid state pocket media for this machine and especially considering all it is is a sata connection to the to the motherboard if you got a case with the proper mounting for that you could actually mount in one of those internally and have a unique system and this does have front io beyond uh 
the hidden stuff up here. It's got headphone, microphone, two USBs, and a FireWire 400. Very odd for 2008 to have FireWire 400 still. A lot of computers from that era were starting to move on to the 800 series FireWire. Maybe it was a cost-cutting measure. A lot of FireWire 400 devices. I'm not exactly sure. But I do like this thing's toolless design in certain places, like right here for the optical drives. They're toolless. And there's a few other little toolless things in the case. But yeah, it's it's a fairly good little beast. I do plan on uh, getting a Windows Vista, a proper Windows Vista build that's higher up the tier right out the box. But this guy right here is going to be my Windows Vista box for now. A lot of people are probably going to go like, well, why do you need a Windows Vista machine? And like, why do you need an XP machine? Why do you need a Windows 7 machine? I like having the stuff on real hardware. I do run virtual machines with these, but one of the problems I run into with VMware, especially VMware 16, Windows Vista does not have any driver support in the latest build. The extensions package requires Windows 7 Service Pack 1 or later, and this is Windows Vista. This is actually Service Pack 1 in Windows Vista that it's configuring right now, so... You do know that's a great step, that this is Windows Vista Service Pack 1. I do have Service Pack 2 on standby that I'm going to get installed on this machine. Uh, both images, actually, I'm going to install that. I have some browsers, open office, stuff like that. So I'm going to be testing this uh, setup for basic stuff. I'm not going to test Steam because I already know the answer to that. It's not going to work. Steam will not work, and considering the hardware I'm going to be testing Vista with for a week, uh, this computer is just not going to even be able to run anything from Steam. Yeah, I can run games from the XP era just fine, even Left 4 Dead 2 with a graphics card, but there's no fun in installing Steam just for it to tell you it won't work. That's the problem. You have to download such an old version or patch it, with a kernel extension for Windows 7, and there's a problem with this. Number one, on this computer, it will not work at all. It's just, there's no way to get the driver, not drivers, the updates past Service Pack 2 on this computer. Microsoft shut down that service last year. The same with Windows XP. I can't fully update those OS's. There are update packages up on uh, archive.org that I'm going to experiment with with a, a test drive in this computer or even the uh, Actiplex 760 with Windows Vista. Did you just see? But I'm not too keen on those as they have to be burned to a DVD and yeah I could install an ISO software reader into Windows Vista, but then that's another hassle. XP is fairly easy. There's like 15 different tools for that that are easily available. Under Windows Vista, a lot of them are gone, which sucks. And it's just a thing. Like, you have to go that route. Now, on this computer, I'm just going to be admin. That's how I always go on these old computers as admin. And we'll go with the uh, robot guy, but I'm going to change that out later. We're going to call this HP dash A A six five one two P. Just so if it when it pops up on the network, I know what it is. We're going to go with the Iconic Vista background. Um, no, I'm not going to use that. Okay, yeah, it's ten. totally that. It's more around this time than anything. Well, you're very welcome, Vista, for helping you out. 
yeah, this computer really just is a interesting relic. A lot of these machines have had their partitions wiped. Both Dells that have a Vista certification have had their data wiped as well, like their whole installation wiped. I believe the Dell, at least the Dell Optiplex 760 was downgraded to Vista, but it had, or not Vista, downgraded the XP from Vista from the factory, but it had the Vista COA on the side of it. So yeah, that was unfortunate with that one. And the other thing that sucks with that machine is there's no way to recover that recovery image from that computer. Unfortunately, the hard drive when I got it was password protected, and I can't access it. It's not that the drive has a password upon Windows booting up. It's the drive actually has a password in order for it to boot. And without that passcode, you cannot get it to boot, and... I'm thinking about taking a crack at it with uh, Kali Linux to see if I can get it to crack the code. But that could take months or years, like literally, for that to work. And I just don't have that time right now to drop to do that. I may do it in the future. might be a fun video project to do. But this Vista project is definitely one of the more fun ones to do. And by the time I do end up using this for a week, the inside of this will have been hit with some compressed air. I can't repaste the CPU at the moment. I'm out of the Arctic Silver MX4 thermal paste. I used the very last of it on the Dimension 8300 back in January, I think it was. So, yeah, I'm kind of out of thermal paste. I have a lot of computers that need some pasting, especially the uh, OptiFlex 3020. If any of you are wondering how that's doing, it's it, it's doing very well now. It's been running Windows 11 since June 16th. It's currently running the uh, dev preview, and Windows 11, I like it so far. It's running pretty good. I don't know why people are comparing it to Vista or 8, but these OSs get a lot of hate, don't they? The odd number, the oddball gets the hate. And it's just so... Or the even numbers rather get the hate, and then the odd numbers get the hate too. So it's kind of like nobody's happy with anything these days anymore, I think. And to conserve some time in the video, I'm just going to let this finish its uh, Windows performance check, and I'll be back. Okay, it looks like we're getting into the desktop for the first time. Preparing your desktop. This is such a gorgeous OS with its design. I really like it nowadays. Uh, as, a, as a kid, I ran Windows XP for most of the 2000s. I only really ended up using Windows 7 in like 2010. And that was for a brief time till that computer died. And that was an e-machines. That one actually, the power supply went kapooey in the middle of the night. It had issues recognizing stuff on the USB ports, and then it just kind of imploded. And yeah, that was the end of the e-machines that we had. I kind of missed that computer a lot. It had that stupid piano gloss black plastic of the late 2000s, early 2010s. My Gateway DX machine has that glossy plastic, and that was my computer for, shoot, better half of a year. A little over a year, actually. I used that throughout 2020. And when I got the 2015 MacBook for my birthday, I stopped using that. And then I got the Dell G5 for a new desktop. And, well, it's been crazy ever since. I, I go through a lot of computers, uh, a lot more than I should, I should say that. And, yeah, it's kind of one of those things, just kind of go through a lot of computers. But a lot of the machines I've used are old anyways. Oh, you can hear the hard drive creaking away. Huh, PC Doctor 5 for Windows PE slash PC DRCD drive dot P5X. wonder what that is. 
It was kind of like going sporadic. Huh. Something's kind of freaking out. Hoping I'll have to pull up that backup I have. Because all I have backed up is the recovery partition, which is 11 gigabytes. So I was going to upload it to archive.org, but my internet just keeps cutting out uploading that file. I think I'm going to have to get better internet or hardwire something in with like dual or quadruple ethernet into the box to get it to fully upload because there's something clearly wrong with that. Let's see. I don't think it's supposed to hang like this. Then again, I haven't used a computer with a hard drive like this in years. Two years to be exact, I haven't used a computer with a hard drive for the boot device. Except for my Windows XP machines, but XP boots quick on those, so it kind of feels like an SSD. Crazy thing, though, once you get used to an SSD, you really can't go back to a hard drive to boot an OS. Oh, here we are. Welcome to your new HP computer. We're going to have a go at this. HP Total Care Setup. This is so 2000s, man. This is so late 2000s. The computer is personal again. I remember that whole thing campaign they had um register later we'll try when i get one of these things connected online to register it uh you're not gonna give any of this stuff from me you're not getting that they tried this stuff back in the 2000s windows 10 was the first to collect your data i guess protect your pc um, well, what year Norton is this? Oh, no, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll turn it on later. Yeah, I know that. Thank you for letting me know. And since this doesn't have any internet connectivity right now, uh, we're going to, uh, just finish. Wow. Everything is complete. How long is this going to take? Okay, introducing HP Total Care Advisor. Okay. That's going to be uninstalled. Customized PC you want. Let's go to software and services available to you. Okay, we. Yeah, I want to watch a short video and introduce you to your new PC. We'll do that another day. I'll see if I can actually rip that right out of this program, which would be kind of cool. Oh, man, that autofocus gets bad sometimes. There's a lot I can do about that, and I apologize. There's going to be a couple videos of this thing coming up, one of them cleaning it, putting in the 8 gigs of RAM, maybe dropping in that video card. Nope. Setting up personalization settings for theme setup. I miss this little bit about old school windows with aerial effect. The transparency effects of like Windows 10 is kind of cool, but nothing beats this late 2000s iconic glass. Except for Windows XP's iconic blue theme with the bliss wallpaper. Nothing beats that in my opinion, but Windows 10 can't even come close to this. I am going to be... You know, using all these old OS's for a week. I haven't been planning on trying to use Windows Millennium Edition for a week. Which, these videos are for fun. And if you try doing it yourself, just don't do anything important online. Okay, we got the proper resolution. Let's see what that was for Norton. Norton Internet Security. Still loading it. Oops. Holy cow, it's still loading. There's that HP Advisor dock. 
The thing kind of looks similar to the Dell doc from uh, Jordan, you know, Jordan's video from the other day of him re yeah, recovering a Dell Studio 540. Kind of crazy. Yahoo search. <laughs> Yahoo. That's crazy. I wonder who happens if I hurt that. I just want to see what's actually... Okay, it's recognizing both CPUs. I had an issue with it the other day. It only recognized one core. That's cool. It got a 3.4 experience. That's crazy. And that hard drive's really getting me. You can see it's service pack 1. That's... Insane. Windows Media Center. I totally forgot about this software. I don't even use uh, the new Windows experience thing. I'm trying to think of that one is. Oh, the uh, video and movie player in Windows. I don't use that. We'll, we'll just go Express Setup. Yeah, this is so nostalgic. This isn't even used anymore. Which is crazy. What version is this? If I can find that. I don't even know if we can find that out. We might not be able to today. Man, this is just so nostalgic here. All this old software. The admin. Movie maker. I may actually try to edit this video in Movie Maker. <laughs> I think I actually will try it. I really think I'm going to try to edit this video in Movie Maker, importing all the correct files. Nah, that might be too much work tonight. Well, anyways, Eric the Computer Guy is signing off today. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, Leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what one to hit. And if you disagree about Windows Vista, leave a comment. I want to hear your opinion on it. That being said, see you guys in the next one. Peace.